it possible that some people seem to possess a mind always full of new ideas? And why others, despite being talented as well, turn out to be completely denied of such creative activity? They simply know a different and more creative way of using their mind. They are definitely better trained to use the thinking systems that foster the generation of many ideas that break away from traditional patterns. In this lecture, we have invited our friend and collaborator, Paolo Sbuttoni, creative thinking coach and expert in creative problem solving, to explore the fundamentals of two types of thinking systems. With Paolo, we will learn about divergent and convergent thinking. And with Marita Canina, associate professor at the design department of Politecnico di Milano, we will dive into lateral thinking. Thank you, Carmen, for this introduction. And thank you so much, Paolo, for taking the time to discuss with us. Thank you, Marita and Carmen, for inviting me to share my experience on deliberate creativity. So, Paolo, what are divergent and convergent thinking? They are the core principles for creativity. Divergent and convergent thinking are two different modes, two forms of thinking that we can deliberately apply to use our mind more effectively, to solve our challenges and situations, creating new and useful solutions. These are the main assets for creativity. Divergent thinking is searching for diverse and novel alternatives, data, ideas, is the so-called creative thinking. In this mind posture, we stretch our imagination to explore what's still not there. Convergent thinking is making decisions through an affirmative evaluation, is making the right choices. I call this positive critical thinking, but it doesn't mean that it's not a creative mode. We should deliberately switch these two thinking powers according to what we need. Divergent purpose is to explore, to make new discoveries, while convergence is to formulate the best choices. We need to intentionally separate the two modes into two different steps. Proficiency in creative thinking needs to dominate both of them. What is the value of applying these types of thinking mode in the creative process? Because it works. Research studies confirm this. For instance, people trained in divergent thinking techniques produce twice as many quality ideas as those who did not have creativity training. And I want to highlight we are talking about quality of ideas, not only quantity. The real value is improving the effectiveness of your thinking. As individuals or teams, we usually find different alternatives or invent some ideas, then we judge them quickly. That is not effective. To unleash your creativity, divergent and convergent thinking must be balanced, but we need to keep them separated. This means generating lots and lots of options before evaluating them. Avoiding early convergence is the golden rule for developing effective creative thinking. Marita, what is lateral thinking? It's much more effective to understand lateral thinking by experiencing it through a challenge. Let's do it. Get a paper, a pen, and try to solve this exercise. How can you slice a cake in eight equal parts with only three cuts? If you like, take your time to solve it. Now we can start by saying that lateral thinking refers to an individual's ability to face problems by imagining solutions that cannot be reached through deduction or logic. De Bono, the father of lateral thinking, divided the ability of thinking in two modes according to the way in which we deal with problems, vertical thinking and lateral thinking. Vertical thinking is carried out in linear sequences through a cause and effect approach. Instead, lateral thinking occurs in a non-sequential way and works by similarities analogies and differences, symmetries and asymmetries. If you face a problem or challenge with a vertical rational thinking, you will achieve correct but limited results. Instead, when 
a truly different and innovative solution is required, you must change the pattern of reasoning and see things differently. Lateral thinking allows your mind to move freely and to explore alternatives that would not be visible otherwise. It's a useful uh, skill to develop original answer to complex questions in everyday life. Sometimes uh, we don't find a solution to a challenge because we use a conventional uh, thinking approach. So practicing lateral thinking can help you find unexpected and creative solutions. So here is a tip. Try to leave the vertical thinking in favor of laterality of creative thinking to stimulate a greater divergence of views. However, as Paolo has said, both styles of thinking are essential and complementary for the production of ideas. Lateral thinking supports divergence and diversification of ideas, while vertical thinking makes the generated ideas usable. Why is lateral thinking important for the creative process? As the name suggests, lateral thinking is the continuous exploration of the widest range of alternatives. This type of thinking is fundamental for the creative process because it allows the creation of radically innovative solutions. Let's make it practical and see with an example uh, how this type of thinking benefits innovation. If we ask you to design an innovative orange whistle, immediately your mind comes up with the archetype of the orange whistle. By adopting a linear approach, you will surely propose new orange whistles with different size, round or squared, manual or automatic, made of different materials, transparent and with different colors or additional accessories. What happens if we adopt a lateral thinking approach? First of all, we have to change the initial request to allow many different alternative ideas and solutions. How do you feel if we ask you to design a new way to extract the juice? Less constrained, right? Immediately, you should feel many alternatives come to mind, don't you? For example, we can think of an object that squeezes the orange or use the vacuum to extract the juice. By asking the right question, we can move away from the classic juicer archetype and propose new solutions that enable radical innovation. Finally, I want to ask you both for a suggestion to close this lesson. If you think of your creativity as a muscle that can be trained and developed, as Poincaré suggests, train regularly your ability to combine existing elements into new and useful combinations. That is based on the ability to disconnect and reconnect knowledge by association in never used before patterns. Creativity and innovation is a matter of change. So dive into your uncomfort zone, take some risks, have fun, enjoy team working, listen, listen to the others. And as Marita mentioned, flip your mind from yes but into yes and, and uh, follow the tips showed. Here are some tips and tricks. Divergent thinking can be activated applying these golden rules. Go for quantity, defer judgment, making a list of everything that comes to mind. Nothing is good, nothing is bad. Be crazy, be wild, make new connections. Then take note of everything. In order to switch to convergent thinking, follow these rules. Be deliberate, avoid snap decisions or harsh judgments. Check your objectives and make choices against the objectives. Improve the ideas, strengthen them until they are shining. Be affirmative. It's important to first consider that what's good about an option or an idea and judge for the purpose of improving. Don't waste time with negative critical thinking. And then consider novelty. 
This is the real aim of creativity, produce novel and original options and ideas. Be daring. Thank you, Paolo and Marita, for sharing so much. I think you are now looking forward to testing and training your creative mind. In this module, we have added many activities to put your divergent, convergent and lateral thinking in practice. And of course, you can also see here the solution to the cake challenge.